Hey everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Myself, Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. So let's begin today's class. I hope all of you are aware of this live schedule, uh, live classes schedule and our mobile application. So without wasting any time, let's move on to the questions directly. The first question is, where is the Voyage Express Ferry operational? So guys, it is operational in Gujarat. Now, why are we discussing about this ferry? So there are two reasons for that. First of all, the unique point about this ferry is that it can generate solar power in itself. And second unique point is that the Minister of Port, Shipping and Waterways has, has himself inaugurated the ship. Okay, so these two factors make this Voyage Express all the more important. So let's discuss the news itself. So, Sabarnanda Sonowal who is the current Minister of Ports, Shipping and Waterways, he has inaugurated this uh, first of its kind ferry. Now, can any one of you tell me that prior to his appointment as the Union Minister, he was the CM of which state? This is your question. Do tell me in the comment section below. Coming back to this news, it is the, uh, this ferry is basically going to join two places in Gujarat the southern uh, region of Gujarat and the Saurashtra region. So I hope all of you are aware of Gujarat's shape. Okay, don't mind my drawing, it is really bad, I know. But as a matter of consideration, let's focus on the news itself. So this is your Kutch Peninsula and this is the Saurashtra Peninsula. So this Saurashtra Peninsula will be joined to the southern Gujarat. Okay, so Gujarat is not only limited to these two peninsulas, it is also spread across this much region. So the southern region of the Gujarat state and the Saurashtra region will be joined together and the uh, time of traveling which used to be there prior to this ferry uh, has been reduced by 70%. And again, it is not a very significant fact. But yes, it is important for you to remember the two points, the two nodes which this Voyage Express is joining, okay? Because that is the traveling route of this express and it can very well be asked. Now, if the size and shape of this uh, ferry is concerned, so it can carry 50 trucks, 25 light-weighted uh, commercial trucks, 70 cars, 52 wheelers along with 600 passengers. So it has a really huge capacity. However, this point is not at all important for all of you to memorize. So don't memorize it. It is just for your information that it is very huge in size. Now, apart from this, the state of art, Roro terminal, rolling out and rolling off terminal has been developed, developed at Hazira in Surat. So that is another information that was important for all of you. The next question is, where is the Secretariat of G20 located at present? Okay. So if you have any bleak idea about G20, then you can easily answer this question because it has mentioned at present. The question itself is saying at present, which country is the secretari Secretariat of G20? So here the right answer is Indonesia. Now, what is the trick here? The trick basically is that first of all, G20 does not have its own secretariat or permanent headquarters in any of the countries. It, the secretarial work or the entire headquarter work is handed over to the country which is organizing the summit of G20 in a particular year. So at present, Indonesia is the chair of G20 summit and therefore the secretariat of G20 at present is Indonesia. Had this question been asked from you in December, then the answer of this question would be India. Because from December 1st, 2022, India is going to take over the presidency of G20. So all the headquarter related work will be undertaken by India. So that's the trick. I hope you have enjoyed this fact. Now we are talking about G20. So here you can see the members. Earlier there were G8 members. Russia was kicked out after Crimean Peninsula annexation. Now it is planning. However, it is not in news as of now. But when Russia invaded Ukraine, it was in the news that Russia is going to be kicked out from the G20 as well. But nothing has happened yet. So this is the group of G7. And these countries include your G20 countries. Okay. 
Now let's learn something more about the G20. So G20 is an international forum of the government and the central bank governors. And the basic idea of creating G20 was to give a platform to the developing and the developed 20 countries of the world so that they can discuss the policy matters, they can discuss the ways to boost their industry as well as the common issues. So that is the basic idea. The G20 uh, was created in 1999 and it is only written like it was uh, created to give a platform for the discussion of policy issues and maintenance of international financial stability. Now, if you have followed the G20 meetings, then you would notice this fact that now G20 has expanded its scope apart from the financial segment. Okay, now the G20 is also working for the ocean uh, su sustainability and agricultural sustainability and main, many other areas are there where the G20 countries are collaborating and uh, focusing on through the medium of G20, okay? Now, as far as extraditional information is concerned, so this is the list of the summits of G20 meetings. So here, 17th summit was organized by Indonesia. Now, the 18th edition of the summit is going to be organized by India next year. A total of 200 G20 meetings are lined up for India to be uh, for our lined up for India for the next year, okay? And the 19th edition of 2024 will be organized by Brazil. And apart from G20, G7 also does not have any headquarters, okay? Now, your task is to tell me that G7 2022 was organized by Germany, which edition of the G7, G7 summit was this uh, summit, okay, which was organized in Germany. The next question is, who heads the Ministry of Finance panel on VC uh, slash PE investments? So here the right answer is M. Damodaran. So M. Damodaran is the former chairman of SEBI and now he has been appointed as the chairperson of this six members panel okay so a total of six members are there on this panel now what is vc and pe let's understand that first so guys vc stands for venture capital and pe stands for uh, private equity now it is basically a pool of funds like we witness in the mutual funds on the one hand we have investors who give the money to the vc or the pe okay and then this pool invests in the companies. Now, there should be a question in your mind that if both the funds are doing the same work, then why is there separate categories? So here, my friends, the basic difference between these two funds is that venture capitalists uh, prefer to invest in new companies, in startups, okay? So venturing out is basically undertaking an ad adventure. So from that word, you can remember that the venture capital funds try to invest in new companies which are more risky, okay? Because investing in a new company is always a risky task to undertake. Whereas on the other hand, private equity uh, funds try to invest in these stable companies, okay? And both of these companies are investing in the equity itself. So that is the similarity and the difference. I hope that it is clear to all of you. Now here in this picture, you can see the differences that are written. Venture capital invest uh, in the innovative startups, whereas private equity invest in the traditional business who are in the need of help. So traditional businesses or the already established businesses have a less of risk. Then the venture capital invest in exchange for a small amount of equity in the business whereas private equity asks for more equity percentage and the risk is spread by the venture capitalist by investing in many businesses whereas the private equity focus its investment on fewer businesses uh, at one time because it is investing in more stable forms okay so that is the basic difference i hope that now you have understood then Let's come to the news. Why has the Ministry of Finance created such a panel? 
Now understand this point that the Ministry of Finance is pushing the investments, private investments really hard. It has reduced the corporate tax, it has uh, provided many incentives, PLI is also there, but even after all such incentives or the schemes, the investment is not coming into India. So in order to give a push to the private equity and venture capital investments in India and also recognize what are the loopholes in the investments or in the sector, this committee has been created. I hope that this much is clear to all of you. Now let's move on to the next question. How many drugs are listed on the national list of essential medicines 2022? So here guys, 384 drugs are listed on this national list of additional uh, essential medicines. From the name itself, it is very evident the purpose of this list is to enlist all the essential med medicines and this is the national list therefore it must have been released by the ministry of health and family welfare so both of these statements are absolutely correct what is the purpose of creating such a list so when there is a list of essential medicines with the ministry then it will be very easy for the ministry to regulate the quality standards of the drug which are mentioned here and secondly ensure their affordability their accessibility and thirdly regulate their pricing because if the medicines are very costly then it will not be the common man will not be able to afford those medicines therefore regulation of price regulation of quality standard and ensuring the affordability all these three are the targets behind creating or objectives behind creating this national list okay so that is the basic idea So I have already explained to you this uh, list was released by Mansut Mandviya, the health minister. Now guys, this is an additional information you can clearly skip. 34 new drugs have been added and 26 pre uh, previous drugs have been dropped out of the list. Now the drugs which are no longer in demand or the disease burden, suppose TB has been eliminated from India, the disease burden is negligible. Then the TB vaccines would be removed out of this list because now that vaccine is no longer needed by India. So if the need is reduced or if the medicine becomes outlandish or if there is a more effective, uh, you can say, drug is present in the market, so the existing drugs are removed from the list. So that is an additional information, no need to remember. So the first national list was released in 1996. Then in 2003, it was revised, 2011, 15, and now in 2022, this list has again been revised. Now understand this one more point that WHO has for the first time created this model list of essential medicines. And on the basis of that list, India has also created its own national list of essential medicines. Okay. And remember this one more point that whenever a country creates its own essential medicine list, then always the country is focused on the disease burden and the needs of its own people. Okay, so the WHO's model list was just an example, and on the basis of that, India has created its own list. The very first list came out in 1996. Okay, there is certain uh, facts related to the list. First is that the National Pharmaceutical Pricing Authority determines the prices. So the prices of the drugs are determined by this NPPA, but this NPPA determines the drugs prices under the drug price control order. So this is the note, uh, this is the gazette and it has been uh, the responsibility of rolling out this gazette has been given to this National Pharmaceutical Pricing Authority under the Essential Medicines Act, sorry, Essential Commodities Act 1955. Okay, so these are some of the facts that uh, are very basic to your general awareness. Therefore, I am telling you all these. Okay, now this NPPA decides the pricing and regulates the quality as well. And it also ensures the availability and affordability of the essential drugs. And this is only written here, Drug Prices Control Order 1995. And this has been released under the Essential Commodities Act of 1955. One more fact which is very uh, relatable, that fact is that the medical devices have been 
considered as drugs for the purpose of regulation and standardization and this step was taken in 2020 only okay so this is the time of covid and in order to ensure the quality standards as well as the availability of the medical devices at the right time this step was taken one last fact that is central drugs standard control organization regulates the quality standards okay so this is another body that has been created by the government just to ensure the quality standards of the drugs and medical devices okay the next question is cisec is the center of excellence in cyber security of which state government so here guys karnataka is the right answer so this is your uh this is the center of excellence of uh, in cyber security which has partnered with dell technologies and the basic purpose of this partnership is to have more and more cyber practices okay to know more and more about cyber security practices that is the basic idea and innovate new solutions so that cyber security can be strengthened next question is where will the harbor phase of the japan india maritime exercise 2022 be held so here uh vishakhapatnam is the right answer every kind of naval exercise is uh takes place in two phases one is the harbor phase and another one is the sea phase so the sea phase of this exercise will take place in the bay of bengal whereas the harbor phase will take place in vishakhapatnam and this is guys the sixth edition of this exercise do remember the edition in 2012 for the very first time japan and india conducted this maritime exercise okay so that is also another part and 2022 guys is the 70th year of india and japan's diplomatic relations and here guys vishakhapatnam okay so it is located at the very north corner northeast corner of this andhra pradesh state The next question is which city is uh, which country is hosting the exercise Kakadu uh, 2022. So here the right answer is Australia. Now it is a multilateral naval exercise where 40 countries are participating. From India we have the INS Satpura and P8 I maritime patrol aircrafts which are also known as the. submarine hunters so the short form or you can say the pet name of these aircraft is submarine hunters so these two are participating in the exercise kakadu which has been organized by the australian navy again you can see that this naval exercise is also going to take place in two phases first sea phase second harbor phase okay so here guys you can see here darwin city is located where this exercise is going to take place okay and this you can uh, see it more clearly in this picture this is the darwin city now guys you can see here a very you can say a very congested channel of water or the appropriate word would be strait so i hope all of you have guessed my question name on this strait in the comment section the next question is which satellites are used by the hu uh, communications in its uh, india's first high through uh, throughput satellite broadband internet service so here option a gsat 11 and gsat 29 satellites are used by this hu india uh, hu communication india company okay so this is guys the very first satellite internet connection satellite broadband service that will be available even in the remote areas as well so now the the problem of internet in the remote areas will be solved and the internet will be provided with the help of gsat and g29 communication satellites so that is a very basic information and and the news in itself was very basic you all know that now the company is like your uh, uh, your spacex okay it is also trying to create the starlink network to provide the internet services even at the remotest 
corner of the earth so similarly use communication is also trying to do that the next question is khajane second is a integrated financial management system of which state so here karnataka is the right answer now the news is that karnataka bank has partnered with the government's integrated financial management system known as khajane second and the basic purpose is to implement the government schemes so all the schemes which relate to giving out the direct benefit transfers in the bank accounts all those schemes will be implemented through the karnataka bank okay so that is the basic idea mahabaleshwar ms is the md and ceo of the bank and your family bank across india is the tagline karnataka is the headquarters the next question is which company has launched a term insurance plan click to protect super uh, which allows the customers to customize the, customize the plan as per their needs so here guys hdfc life insurance is the right answer so it is a new kind of insurance product that is customized customizable so the customers can themselves change the plan as per their needs and add features to them as uh allowed by this insurance company and there is nothing much to that news it's a very simple news sir uthake jio is the tagline of this insurance company so guys it is a non linked non participating individual pure risk premium saving insurance plan and it is available in three options life life plus and life gold and these are basic informations related to this and here this video ends i hope that you have enjoyed the video thank you so much for watching